Welcome back everybody, my name is Gamma Trap, one word, and this is our tutorial series where we cover foliage like grass, vines, bushes, and trees. I have a lot of episodes planned for this entire series, so be sure to subscribe and ring the bell if you'd like to be notified when each video drops. But without further ado, let's get started. All right, so we're finally getting into grass. Now people have been asking me to kind of do grass ever since I made this little quote unquote grass pedestal, which I actually just did some special stuff to it. Just add a little extra dirt so that when I do paint some grass, it uh, it shows a little better. And eventually we're going to actually repaint this entire pedestal. But for now, let's just jump right in to the basics, the basics. Like we always like to start on every one of these topics, the basics of grass. So what we're gonna need is our hard round pressure opacity brush. This is pretty much gonna be our go-to brush, like, like with every one of our things, Firestone, all this stuff. I always try to use the hard round pressure opacity because the hard round brush is usually on every single, every single program. You don't need Photoshop, you don't need Procreate, you don't need, you know, all these things. Every single program has pretty much got this brush. But we're gonna just jump right in. And usually I like to have shape dynamics turned off, but for the blades of grass, we're actually gonna keep it turned on. Now I like to start my grass, if I'm close, if I'm close up grass, cause there's different levels of grass. Something you're gonna come to learn the further we get into this series is there's different depths of grass. This grass on the pedestal is what you might call like a medium distance kind of grass. It's just grass you just throw together that has basic grass behavior that you don't really see the quote unquote grass. You just kind of see this and just assume it's grass, you know, because it's it, it's acting like grass. You know, it's got the, the swoops and the swooshes and, and, it, and it behaves with the dirt like grass. It's got grass colors, you know, things like that. A lot of grass when you're painting it is all about kind of assumptions and, and indications. Like there's certain things here that indicate that this is grass. Now we're gonna be drawing a close-up grass first just so you can understand these, these basic behaviors, but we'll get into the medium level grass uh, in the next episode. So let's just jump right into this real quick. Grass, and this is gonna be fast by the way, grass is just, it moves and it bends. And the direction of the grass is dependent on the sun, believe it or not. Uh, so if the sun is over here, the grass is going to be moving in that direction. If the sun is over here, it's gonna be moving in that direction. And that's just how grass does. But usually we don't really care too much about that. <laughs> usually as artists, we use grass to communicate movement because grass is great because grass is like tiny little arrows pointing people's eyes in the direction we want them to go. It's, it's wonderful, it's like, like this pedestal here. I've got the grass, you know, constantly moving out away from the center of the pedestal just so that your eyes are drawn to the pedestal itself, to whatever's in the center of the pedestal. So we're going to use grass in that behavior. We're not gonna worry too much about you know, which way the sun's going. You, know, you can if you want to, but I don't actually think it's all grass either, by the way. Some grass don't actually work like that, I've been told. Point is, it doesn't really matter because you know, we're artists, we can make it and do whatever we want, right? So we're just gonna have grass go from here to here in this general direction. And all you really gotta worry about with grass is if the grass is tall, it will bend because the weight of the grass is a little, little much. And usually, depending on if the grass is a thick stalk and a thin top area, usually it'll be kind of straight, but then the thinner it gets, it'll kind of bend. But a lot of grass also kind of does some of this right here, especially some of this grass right here I've got on this pedestal. The, the point I'm making here is, is you, the grass is so loose. Grass is so such a such a basic, simple accent to anything you want to make. Grass is, uh, it's like a, it's like a cards for a magician. You know, you don't need cards to pull off magic tricks, but if you have a deck of cards, you could probably pull off thousands of different magic tricks, you know? So we're just gonna start putting some random grass shapes. I'm actually gonna move this a little further this way. Now, don't forget the rule of cool, don't be boring, and shapes within shapes. If this is your first time watching my videos, I do stylized tutorials of about all kinds of stuff. And the rules, the three main rules of stylized work is don't be boring, shapes within shapes, and the rule of cool. So the rule of cool means it doesn't necessarily have to make sense as long as it looks cool. Don't be boring means don't be predictable. Don't draw the same thing over and over and over again, because that does not get people's attention. So we, that's the big one I'm gonna talk about right now with this grass. You don't want all your grass to just do that. I mean, you can if you want to, if, if it's really not supposed to draw any attention, if it's going to be like, if it's going to be this tiny little thing like over here, you know, like if it, if it's like just some of that, 
it can be kind of repetitive. I mean, that that's it's perfectly fine. But if you're if, if, if anybody's supposed to be looking at this grass, try your best to not have it look too same, too predictable. So not only you'll see, do I have grass going up like this, but I also have some grass going bending the other direction. Now also with the don't be boring, all this grass is roughly the same width. So if we change our brush size and the lengths of this grass, It's, it's fast, it's literally just one stroke, just figure out which way you want it to go, you know? And with your eraser, if you got the same situation, same brush, it's really fun to add extra characteristics to the blades of grass. You don't want to have just boring blades of grass all the time. So oftentimes, blades of grass are rarely just perfect, you'll find. Now the next episode we're going to do in this grass and foliage series is going to be leaves and like little leafy plants. That's going to be a bit more characteristics in that, believe it or not. Now we've got the basic shape. Pretty much how I want it. Now let's just add a clipping mask by coming down to here, new layer, right clicking it. Do clipping mask. I'm gonna go to a brighter green. I use these greens right here, which is uh, just real quick. They go from sort of a, a yellow green, like a, a nice bright green, like almost neon. And it kind of moves up closer towards the teal and turquoise area. The further down I go, because I wanna add a little bit of blue to my shadow. Now, with our clipping mask and our brighter green, we can start adding in the really pretty stuff. Find the biggest blades of grass, like the, the ones you want to be roughly in front. And don't paint just like hold, don't just, don't just hold your brush down all the way. You want to have a little subtlety, you know, a little easy. This is part of the characteristics that you're painting. And you, you have an eraser the exact same way. So you don't worry too much about messing up your, your lovely grass, you know, just hit the eraser button. And this is a clipping mask, so yeah, you can you can totally just add a little extra subtlety, and you can you can find the blades of grass that you want in the back of this, and erase the brightness out of them. You can have just a little bit of light near the top of the grass. Maybe not that much. <laughs> And let's kind of gently erase the, some of the light from the bottom. You want to have this sort of this interesting flow of shadow near the bottom because usually there's other grass around this grass. So usually the light doesn't always reach the base of the grass. And then you want some some light near the top. Now, if you want your grass to have a more like 3D feel, because we do like 3D shapes in stylized work, you can just find the bottom of the grass and erase the light part. Very gently. Just gonna find the grass I like. I'm also going to erase a bit more off this base of the grass. I'm just going to erase upwards a bit, kind of following the stroke of the grass. Very cool so far, very nice. Now I'm going to, let's see, add a bit more light. just want to touch a light up here. Here's an interesting part where you can actually use our soft brush. You can turn shape dynamics off that, so instead of a point, we just have, you know, regular. We could just gently kind of brush over the top. Don't go full hard, you can if you want to, but you know, just kind of gently. Grass is a very gentle, very, very calm, therapeutic thing to paint. You know, don't, don't sully that process by being too aggressive. Now, what I kind of want to do is 
get our hard brush again. I kind of want to just real quick add uh, some basic kind of leaf shapes. Just because it's nice, you know? And leaf shapes are simply like, usually like that. I mean, don't go too crazy. You can always just use shape dynamics up here and just kind of, you know, add little dots with a little point to it if you want. We'll get more into that in our leafy section of, of stuff. And because this is a new layer, you can clean it up if you like. Just make these shapes a little more, a little more understandable. Now we'll just give them the same treatment. Like I said, like grass is just meant to be loose and kind of calming. You know, you don't have to worry too much about. And I'm not going to paint on all of these shapes like this. I'm just going to grab the top part of the shape that I think the sun will hit the most. And that's actually a technique in cell shading, believe it or not. Now we can clean all this up. But remember, grass is very kind of therapeutic to paint. For me, I, I like painting like natural stuff in very kind of stylized ways. It just, I don't know, it makes me, it makes me kind of happy. You can make this grass and these leaves interesting. Always a plus if you do that. My personal opinion. Don't forget to make sure you're on the right layer. You can shrink your brush down at this point because we're just doing some detail work. Just erasing a bit, getting the shape right. I'm always a big advocate of not shrinking your brush until like you're absolutely sure you're gonna start doing details. Let's make sure we get all these layers when we're moving this thing. I want this to be kind of roughly centered. And now we're just gonna grab all these grass layers and we're going to merge them. Come down to merge layers. So now it's a single layer. We're not afraid of anything around here, okay? Now I'm going to copy this layer, and I do that with, with uh, Control J or Command J. Uh, I don't think it's a hotkey for everything, but there's usually a way to duplicate a layer, and usually it's called duplicate, not copy. And I'm just doing that so in case I mess it up, I still have the original layer. And all we're gonna do is just clean this up just a tiny little bit. Seriously, just barely at all. We kind of like these these crazy eccentricities and such, you know? We kind of like how everything moves like this. Our goal is not to make realistic grass right now, it's to make interesting grass. Interesting grass-like shapes. Interesting grass-like movements. Now I'm gonna add another layer behind it. And let's just find out where we want this grass to be. I kinda like it like right there, it's actually fine. Doesn't bother me at all. Now the layer we're doing behind it is I'm just going to give that dark green to a bit of this. Just real quick. I'm just gonna erase a bit of it. I'm just gonna do this little pull and push situation. Grab some darker color, kinda make it blend a bit. Give the grass a shadow. Everything has a shadow if it lives in a world with light. Not to sound too superhero-y. And now the secret of grass is, you make the shadow first, then you grab the color of the grass, then you paint on the grass. You make the shadow first, you grab the color of the grass, and then you paint on the grass. I'm gonna repeat myself a lot. That is essentially the rules of grass. In any way you draw, any way you draw grass, you make, you get the shadow first, you grab the color of the grass, and you paint on the grass. <laughs> I really cannot. I, 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 it blows my mind how simple it truly is. I turn off shape and I mix here so I can just get a smoother shadow. It truly is the most simple fundamental of grass. All right, you get the shadow first, you grab the color of the grass, then you paint the grass. Shadow. Grass. Believe it or not, that's a really huge thing. 
See what I'm saying? You get the shadow first. You grab the color of the grass. Then you paint the grass. And you could paint grass behaving in strange ways. Like I said, the, the main point of grass is to just be an artist's tool. I mean, like, obviously not like in real life. Grass has a very vital purpose in real life. I'm just going to make this edge interesting. bit of blending. I'm just trying to make it fit on this platform a bit. And that's like, look at that. Look, a little clump of grass is becoming its own thing. It's growing up. It's leaving the nest. That's not something grass does, by the way, for those who run aware. That's a bird thing. But, I mean, hey. I just equated grass to superheroes. I think we can give me, cut me a little slack for this one, please. All right, <laughs> I think, I think I deserve it. I might not, but hey. <laughs> All right, now the the super interesting stuff. We've got, we've got the grass. Congratulations, you've got this far. Now, my personal thing, I like to do a little extra credit. All right, so if you're new here, just sit back, relax, and the extra credit I'm going to do is just a little extra control to make sure it fits on the platform, and then do a little lighting, and that's it. You won't miss much, all right? In fact, I'll time lapse it, and you can just enjoy it for a second, okay? So there we go. So like, like I said, all I do is I just make it, you know, do the lighting thing and I make it look like it makes sense on the platform that I have a little here, a little pedestal, which again, next episode, we're actually going to give it a revamp. Instead of looking messy like it does now, we're going to clean it up a bit and we're going to make it look a little prettier in the next episode because this one's about close up grass. Next episode's about slightly farther away, mid range, medium distance grass. Thank you so much for uh, watching this lovely process. Hopefully you enjoyed the extra credit. Hopefully you enjoy the process. Hopefully you get to make some really cool grass of your own. I can't wait to progress further in this series. We're going to make, uh, like I said, medium distance grass and then leafy plants and then, you know, bushes, trees. I probably won't get into flowers. There's so many flowers. I'll draw a couple just for just a little bit, probably in the next episode, just a couple small ones. Like I've got down the corner of this platform already. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Leave a like if you liked it, a dislike if you dislike it sub to see more i've got a bunch of tutorials just like this talking about how to make a bunch of things thank you so much to my amazing patrons i appreciate the ever loving out of you for supporting the ever loving out of me and i will see you in the next video Bye bye